Okay, let's get started. So uh, I am recording this and um, hopefully we'll be able to make it available to you if the computer doesn't run out of memory. Um, <clears throat> let's see um, what's first. So let's go over, I'm going to share a screen with you for the um, course website, I think. There we go. Right, so uh, I haven't started grading the midterms yet. Click on this midterm link, and then I posted my solutions here, so you can kind of go through those. I've given two solutions to count roots. This is the recur combinator, which takes a function as an input called tweaker and then defines a function called fun and just returns fun. And this is what I meant by redefining the Ackerman hierarchy. So here I'm using defs, it's commented out. And then here I'm using the recur combinator with vowels. And then the list processing had two parts. Here's the my declaration of flight class. We do all of this input validation here. And um, I have to override equals, I have to override hash code. I had to include a companion object. And then here is, um, where, 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 here. Here is my implementation of average delay. So you can look that over, you can email me with questions. I will probably, have your uh, papers graded and um, this weekend. Right, um, so let's click on lectures. Still in Scala programming notes. Oh, by the way, uh, I did post an assignment. And let's see if I can find that. Mm. So this assignment six, Jedi 0, 0.0. So this is just uh, you creating some of the, uh, some of the value classes, sort of the beginning of the Jedi hierarchy. And um, I'll discuss that in class um, in a little bit, everybody catches up. So back to, um, back to Scala programming notes. And, uh, you know, and now we're, we're turning the focus of the class since the midterm, we're going to turn the focus of the class, concentrate mostly on language processing, uh, building an interpreter for this Jedi language. And uh, so that really begins down here with this link pattern driven control and Scala. So let me click on that. And this is all about um, this particular website is all about regular expressions. I've gotten a little taste of regular expressions from one of the homework problems. So a regular expression, as I've explained before, is describing a pattern. And so then this is a string pattern. So you can ask if different strings match the pattern. And here's like a piece of a session from the Scala interpreter. And here I'm setting up a really simple pattern, dog pattern. It's just the string dog. And now you can take any string, matches is a method in the string class. And here I'm asking, does the string match dog pattern? It says true. What about the string cat? Does it match dog pattern? False. In order to match the pattern dog, I mean, just a simple, literal string um, the only pattern that matches it is the string dog itself so those are literal patterns literally just that string is the only thing that matches it and then you can build up more patterns so if a and b are patterns you can a question mark is uh pattern a is optional so it's matched by anything that matches a or the empty string Here's A or B, 
to match this pattern, you either have to match A or match B. And this is A followed by B. And, and in regular expressions, they don't use that tilde that uh, we were using in that homework assignment. So you just write two patterns next to each other. And we understand it's pattern A followed by pattern B. So a string, in order for a string to match that, we would need a prefix that matched A and a corresponding suffix that matched B. A plus, a little plus sign, means uh, one or more A. So to match this pattern, you would have to uh, be uh, a st string that repeats. It wouldn't have to be the same string that repeats, but you have to be able to bust your string up into substrings, each one of which matched A. And then A star is similar. It's instead of one or more, it's zero or more. So the empty string matches this one. And then for disambiguation, group capturing, and so forth, you can always put uh, parentheses around a pattern. We'll see why that is the case in a minute. So here's pet pattern. So in pet pattern, uh, this is dog or cats, I'm using that little pipe symbol there, right? Now I asked, does dog match pet pattern? Well, that's true. Cat also matches pet pattern, okay? Um, bark pattern. So bark pattern is the string woof, okay, with parentheses around it, and then this plus sign, those are sometimes plus and star, sometimes called, quantifiers. So it's got this plus sign after it. So it means uh, woof repeated one or more times. So here, woof, woof, woof matches the bark. The bark pattern is true. Okay. I'm going to try that again down here, meow pattern. So I've got the string meow with a plus sign after it. Okay. Uh, and then I asked, does meow, meow, meow match it? But it says false. What? Why does that say false? On the other hand, meow with a whole bunch of W's after it does match the pattern. So you see what happened here is that that quantifier plus only applies to the W. That's why up here, Woof, if you wanted it to plus to apply to the entire pattern, you have to put parentheses around the pattern that plus applies to. Is that um, clear? I'm going to stop the share for a moment um, to see if I've got any problems. Brianna says, so it's due March 26 now. What's due March 26? Is that the homework that you're talking about, Brianna? Yeah, I guess. I don't know. We'll get back to that later. That's a homework-related question. Um, let me go back to the screen share. Um, so speak up if there's something that confuses you here. It's like kind of weird to be you lecturing to an empty room. Uh, <clears throat> I'm picturing all of you, you know, off making sandwiches in your kitchens. <clears throat> Here's another thing. Uh, here the warning is you got to watch out for blank spaces. So a uh, name pattern. So uh, I begin with Mr. or Ms. And that part of the pattern is optional. And then uh, the rest of the name is Jones or Smith or Rogers. So that's the entire pattern. So Mr. Smith matches name pattern. Smith by itself matches name pattern. Take a minute to figure out why that's true. You see why? Because of this question mark here, the title is optional. Here, Miss Jones does not match the pattern. Why is that? Well, regular expressions, we, at least the way they're implemented in Java and Scholar, are a little bit annoying. 
Uh, if you look at this, so blank spaces are significant when you're writing down a regular expression. So if you look up here, notice that the pattern isn't MR, it's MR single space, MS single space. That's to enforce that space between a single space between the title and the name. Here, for example, Ms. Rogers does not match the pattern because there is like no, no space in there. Is that clear? Questions? Yeah, that's clear. Good, thank you. Um, so there are a lot of regular features. I'm going to click over here. This is uh, the Javadoc page for the pattern class. So Java library has like a, a whole bunch of uh, a whole bunch of support for regular expressions. And uh, the only reason I'm pointing you over to here is that this is one place I know of which has like a summary here of all of the special characters that you can use in your regular expressions. Okay, now don't go crazy with these things because I don't know all of these patterns either, but, uh, but it is a good source. So again, you go to the Javadoc pages and you look up the Javadoc for the pattern class. Okay, and you'll find lots of these things in here. Uh, for example, alpha num pattern. So an alphanumeric string is a string that contains, it's made up entirely out of letters and digits, right? And so uh, this thing in square braces is one of these shortcut. These are for ranges. So to match this pattern, what it says is anything in the range lowercase, any character, in the range lowercase a to uppercase z, uppercase a to uppercase z, or zero through nine matches this pattern. And then you put square braces around it. And again, that's just like a kind of a shortcut pattern. You could spell this out by using the pipe symbol. You could say or a or b or c or, you know, it would take you forever to do it but that's an abbreviation for that. And then plus means one or more of these alphanumeric characters. So for example, here, agent 007 does match the pattern. Here's um, another example. Let's see if we can parse this one. So uh, expression pattern. Okay, so the pattern starts out with this guy here. So the part in square braces is matched by any digit, zero, one, two, three, et cetera. Okay, and then this plus sign means one or more digits. So this whole thing, is matched by one or more digits, any sequence of digits. Okay. This guy here is uh, a, one of these predefined patterns. Okay. Um, lowercase s with a slash in front of it, so it's actually this one. We can go over here and probably find it you know, in, the, in the list here somewhere. Come on, characters, characters. Oh, I know it's in here somewhere. Hopefully I can't find backslash S. Oh, here it is. Oh, you gotta tell me where it is. Back to a, a, a white space character. White space character is tab, new line, or space. Okay. Um, and then star would mean zero or more spaces. So a string of digits 
followed by zero or more spaces. And then next, followed by a plus sign or a time sign. Now you're seeing lots of crazy backslashes there. I'll come back and explain those in a moment. You won't like the explanation though. And then this guy here is zero or more white spaces. And then here is uh, one or more digits. So what the expression pattern says, I'll spell it out for you in English. Uh, you match the expression patch as if you had a sequence of digits, um, a plus or a time sign, and then another sequence of digits. So 23 plus 42, that sort of thing. And between the operator symbols, the plus or times and the digits, there can be white spaces. So that's what that's saying. And if we come down here, like here, the, pad, the string is 23 times 42. That matches the expression pattern. And see, I was really sloppy about this, right? Uh, the multiply sign comes right after the three. And then here I have like between the multiply and the four, I have a whole bunch of spaces. Here, 999 plus 999 also matches the pattern, even though I've got a ton of white space in there. And then here, two times three, no white space at all. That also matches the pattern. Okay, now what's the deal with all these black backslashes? I mean, this is kind of a this is kind of annoying. Um, you know that um, it's Let's see, maybe what I should do is, maybe I can, I'm gonna stop that. If I can pull up just like a, an ordinary text pad to explain this to you. I don't wanna bet this thing is not. Um, if I let's see, is this going to be too small to read? Let's see. Okay, so if I, uh, so some of you are familiar with this sort of stuff, like. Right, so you all know what that string means. That is ABC followed by the new line character. All right, does that look familiar? You could also do backslash T, ABC followed by the tab character. If I just did ABC N, right, then N is interpreted literally. This is just the string ABC N. But when I put that backslash in front of it, it means, oh, N is not to be interpreted literally. N means something special here. And backslash is sometimes called escape. Escape the usual definition. Okay, now I want to say backslash. I want this pattern. So in this pattern, I went, I'm trying to express ABC followed by, um, followed by a bunch of white spaces. That's it, I forgot, let me just look real quick, real quick. Wait, I'm gonna cheat for a second, backslash S. Um, yeah, that's treated as a single character. So I don't need the parentheses. <laughs> So here, uh, what I'm trying to say is the pattern ABC followed by zero or more white spaces followed by, let's make it more interesting, DEF, it's more interesting. But if I try to use that, the compiler complains that backslash S is not one of the known escape char uh, uh, control characters, that's what they call them. There's backslash N, 
for new line, there's backslash T for tab, there's backslash A for the little alarm bell. I mean, there is like a, a list of, um, there's a list of these, these control characters that aren't interpreted literally. Backslash S isn't on them. It's significant for regular expressions, but not significant to the compiler. So what I have to do is I have to put another backslash in here. And this backslash basically undoes the first backslash, or it says, uh, it, don't worry about this backslash. The next backslash, take it to be literal. Okay, so that, so that, uh, so this, so this basically turns into, well, this tells the compiler, right? This tells the compiler that this backslash is part of the expression. I'm not I'm trying to invent some new kind of control character. Okay, now the situation got even worse when I did this. I had uh, let's see, and then followed by So here, so here, I'm trying to say a sequence of digits followed by plus or times and followed by another sequence of digits. But I run into problems here too because remember plus here is the, plus there is the quantifier, repeat one or more times but not this plus. This plus, I mean, no, literally the plus symbol I'm looking for. So to get that not to be interpreted as the quantifier plus, I have to escape it. And I literally mean plus, but then the compiler complains, well, plus is not a control character, so I have to escape it again. The same is true for star. That's a, that is a, that means zero or more. So if you just literally mean star, you have to do the double escape. If you hate this, right? Why wouldn't you hate this? Um, there's a very, very small amount of relief, uh, which is called a raw string. Raw strings uh, don't have Raw strings do not have escape characters, uh, I'm sorry, control characters in them. Backslash n just means backslash n. It doesn't mean new line. So a uh, raw string in Java or Scala has three quotes around it. And now what you get to do is you get to eliminate the double backslashes, but you still have to have single backslash. So this is the raw string. I'm describing a pattern that begins with a sequence of digits, followed by, so I haven't got any white space in here, followed by literally the plus symbol or literally the star symbol. I don't mean repeat one or more times, followed by another string of digits. Uh, why did you put uh, three quotation marks? Okay, so, so again, the, the problem is if you have single quotation marks, Strings and single quotation marks are allowed to take control characters in them. The standard control characters are backslash n, backslash t, backslash a. Uh, you know, there are several other of them too. And the control character means don't take it literally. Instead, you know, I want something to happen here. I want to. You know, backslash n means I want you to generate a new line, for example, or a, a tab or something like that. So this string here means ABC new line, right? And so, uh, and so because of that, uh, if you wanted to use regular expression shortcuts like, like S here for white space, or I'm sorry, it's backslash S. It's a special regular expression matched by any white space character. Since it's not in this list of control characters, 
you're going to get an error message unless you put another backslash in front of it saying, no, 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 I, I know backslash s is not a control character. Just treat it literally as backslash s. So, so everywhere you're using these things that are spe have special meaning for regular expressions, right, you have to use this double backslash in front of it. Putting triple quotes around it is called, makes it in what's called a raw string. Raw strings don't have any of these control characters in them. If I have, uh, for example, here, let's turn this into a raw string. This is the string ABC backslash N, not the string ABC new line. Okay. So since there are no control characters in a raw string, I don't need the double backslash, just the single backslash. And, you know, I've given, I've given this lecture, some form of this lecture, you know, practically, you know, my entire career at San Jose State, it's always confusing. You know, and these like, all of these like crazy backslashes everywhere. There is uh, some additional explanation of it uh, that you can get in the Javadoc page that I was showing you. Um, and I, of course, read through that a million times. Find that guy again. All right, so backslashes, escapes, and quotings. So yeah, he explains it there again, but. Good luck. All right, so coming back here, here's my new version of this pattern, special expression pattern two. So, so a string of digits and plus means it is a special regular expression symbol. It means repeat one or more times. Backslash S is also a special regular expression symbol, it means any white space character. Star, a regular expression symbol, it means repeat zero or more times. So this is a sequence of one or more digits followed by zero or more white space characters. And then here, plus or times, but not, I don't mean the special regular expression operator plus, I just mean literally, the character plus, so I have to escape that, and, and so forth. I don't need the, the only difference from this and the original patterns, the original pattern, I had to have double backslashes, and here I have to, I only need single backslashes. So not much, uh, not much of an improvement. Okay, so let's do this. Um, why don't you give this a try? Uh, let's see how to guide you there. I think, is there a link at the bottom of the page? Yeah, scroll down to the bottom of the page and click on regular expression labs. Everybody find that? Anybody not find that? Okay, so uh, what I'm going to, you got it? Good. What yep. I'm going to do is, um, so so here, let's just start and we can, you know, I guess what, I, what I'm going to do, I'm going to copy, um, let's copy the first four of these guys. And then uh, go over and start up Eclipse. Where's that Eclipse? And I'm going to start a, uh, in my demos area, I'm going to create a worksheet. I'm going to call it Lex2.
Amen. You should do the same. By the way, I provided a link in Canvas for you to upload this to. Here's natural numbers. But what I want you to do is to define nat pattern. And let's work on it together. So you can see here, zero matches nat pattern, but 007 does not match it. Why is that? Well, you know, it just looks weird, right? I mean, normally we don't start like a number with like a whole bunch of zeros. I mean, 007, why do they call them agent 007? Why don't they just call them agent seven? Not as cool, I guess. 700 matches the pattern uh, as well. Okay, so, so the challenge here is you might have thought that the way to do this would just be something like that, 0 dash 9 uh, plus, let's make that plus, any sequence of digits, right? But if I do, Something like you see, you get the answer true, and I didn't want that to be true. So take a few minutes to see if you can fix this pattern so that it excludes leading zeros, but you don't want to exclude zero itself. Your, see if you're commenting online here and all. Gosh, my biggest problem with this is finding the chat area. Okay, well, good news, you don't have to do this. Yeah. Chat's on the bottom of the screen. Yeah, oh, yeah, I found it. Looks like Abdurham is like already provided the solution for you. So don't post, don't post your answers to the, uh, to everyone on chat. You know, but, but he's got this, here, which is actually not quite correct. Professor, can I send you my solution and see if you um... just send? Well, just send it as a private message to me on chat. Okay. Yeah, you can set if like wh who your message is sent to, between everyone or just him. Don't put in parentheses that aren't necessary. I mean, not that it hurts, but you know, just not necessary. Okay. And David, were you going to? Oh, there you are. Yeah, David, it looks like what you're saying is that a digit 
a number, an actual number is a sequence of non-zero digits followed by, optionally followed by as many zeros as I want. But what about numbers like, like your pattern wouldn't match 101, that's a natural number. Mike, um, yes, uh, that's good, Mike, Kang, you got it. I'm going to steal my Kang solution and to what he wrote is zero or one through nine followed by zero through nine. Let's see if I've got that right. Star. Yeah, that's an elegant answer. So that's the thing when I put, I think, but except I put zero on the other side of the or statement. Mm. And I put extra parentheses. Well, and also, I mean, what you did is correct. What you did was correct, but the plus sign isn't necessary there. Oh, okay. Right. And the parentheses aren't necessary. Okay, so um, let's try the next one then. Um, so int pattern. Int pattern is similar to nat pattern, but int pattern is for signed uh, numbers. So still, we aren't going to allow leading zeros here. And um, here you could have a leading minus sign, and you can also have a leading plus sign, but zero is not a signed number. So we don't allow minus sign or a, Z, a plus sign in front of zero. So that's called, I think it's called int pattern. Int pattern. So see if you can work that out. realized it was muted. So uh, Tom, that is correct solution. Mm. Mike, does the minus sign need to be escaped? So, um, Mike, uh, we're not using square braces are only for uh, those special regular expressions. So maybe you meant, maybe you meant 
I don't know, unless I'm forgetting something, but maybe you meant backslash plus. Lab due 5 p.m. today. Yes, that's correct. Let me uh, just check. Maybe that is right. Um, Lab is worth zero points. Some of you are asking about that. Character class is grouping. Yeah, I'm not seeing square braces as an set as a as an escape mechanism. Oh, maybe maybe it is. Maybe it can be used as an escape mechanism. Okay, so here's what I'm, here's the solution that I liked the best that I saw. Um, so, um, how have you had this zero or, and now, Careful here, this plus sign. I just did it like this with this plus sign just hanging out here. The plus sign, if I'm using this as a regular in a context which is expecting it to be a regular expression, that plus sign is, means repeat one or more times, which is not what I mean. What I mean is no, literally the plus sign, if I put a backslash in front of it. Without these three quotes, if I just have single quotes here, then I'd need to put two backslashes in front of it. So zero by itself, or and then plus or minus with a question mark, meaning it's the sign is optional, and then non-zero digit followed by zero or more digits. Yeah, that's good. Notice that if you did, this is what kind of annoying. Suppose you thought, well, you know, I'm going to be like a good guy and put some nice formatting in here like this. Well, that's not interpreted as formatting, right? So this is the pattern here, zero followed by a blank space. So if you just try to match zero with that, it'll say false, right? Because it's looking for that stupid blank space. So, so don't, you know, and then here too plus or minus sign followed by a blank space, optional, followed by another blank space and then some digits. Okay, floating point numbers. So uh, floating point pattern uh, includes signed numbers. So 100, that string matches the floating point pattern. A 100.001 matches the floating point pattern. 100 point and then nothing after it does not match it. There is a decimal point, but no decimal part. 0 0.001 matches the floating point pattern. So there is no whole number parts to this. 0 0.001, that matches it. 007 still does not match it. Wow. All right. So we'll give a shot at that. Oh, wow. Let's see. Already getting some solutions. Okay. 
back motion through nine. Yeah, that looks good, Tom. Um, let's see, though, I, I think that the natural, the whole part of it has to also be optional, doesn't it? Because we had that 0 0.001. I don't think 0 0.001 matches yours. Oh, point zero zero one is false. Um, no, you're right. Point zero zero one is false. So you do need to have something in front of it. Okay. There. Let's go out just because I haven't finished doing this yet. Some of you are starting with this. Yeah, um, let's see. I don't think slash is necessary in front of the minus sign because I don't think minus sign I don't think the minus sign has any special significance for regular expressions. It's not a regular expression operator. All right, so what I'm seeing here is this, let me see, I'll copy this one. Um, Tricky. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I don't know if I can do this. Think um, sort of similar, Mike. You have to uh, you have to worry about the sign. I don't see. I think signs are allowed in front of these, aren't they? Just double check. Well, it doesn't say, but we want to be able to talk about negative and positive floating point numbers. And yeah, yeah, that looks okay. So you're making the decimal point optional. Um, minus, minus is optional. I'm looking at Min Young's, which she's posted. Um, you, let's see, and then that you don't need the Min Young. I don't think you need that quest that question mark is, I don't know if that's quite right. Uh, zero through nine star, that whole thing could be repeated zero or more times. 
right? I think that yours, it's possible, uh, isn't it possible for you to have a number like one, two, three decimal point, Min Young? With no, get a decimal point with no numbers after it. Um, yeah, likes is good. Um, Brianna, as you move through nine, why do I have to have two zero through nines? So 100, uh, 100 point, yeah. So I don't, there's, if there's going to be a decimal point, you should not have, you should have some digits come after it. Yeah, that's Jacob. That's was my solution here. Uh, I, you know, I'll tell you though, my solution here is not quite correct. Right, and here is why. Um, False. So here, uh, I'm, I certainly want to be able to express numbers like negative 0 0.001. On the other hand, uh, if I had that minus sign there with a zero, there must be like a decimal part to it. So you want us to include negatives? Yes. Yeah. We should be able to express any floating point number. Okay. And, and I, uh, I think, um, I think, you know, you might need, I mean, this is getting kind of awkward, but you might need something like this. Escape the plus sign. I've added, I, you know, I don't know if I can do another quote. So here I've added an or plus or minus zero, but now you're required to follow it by a decimal point. What if we put the decimal point in the first zero? Like make it optional, like the one at the beginning, the beginning zero. Okay, let me just see if I got it. Okay, so now mine is true. So the decimal point in the first C round. Yeah. Well, I also want zero by itself to be a floating point number. We'll get we could get zero by itself, uh, and we could also get the decimal point. Like we could make it like optional decimal point. An optimal does, but then what about the sign though? I don't want negative zero, but I do want negative 0 0.01. Oh yeah. And you know, and, and actually still I'm wrong about this because uh, I would not want negative 0, 0.0. So, um, so at any rate, you know, there's, it goes on and on. I mean, it's uh, writing down like a good floating point pattern. So think about it. Writing down a good floating point pattern is uh, for a floating point is is difficult to do. You know, there are a lot of cases to do. Um, I'm going to switch us back to the notes for a second.
Um, here is a date pattern that you can uh, you can try uh, to do. Um, so uh, date pattern. These patterns, regular expressions, are used a lot, like in applications, online applications, like fill in your birthday, right? And so we're expecting you to fill in something a particular format. You could use a regular expression to, to check if it fits that format. Um, you know, so uh, and here you have this optional CE Christian era or BCE before Christian era. Um, zero should be an invalid uh, date. I think month. I guess these are the months here. Um, a year. You want four digits for the year, so we don't have like a Y three K problem. Um, or do we want four? No, we could have three. That matches it to two. Um, let's see what's wrong with this one. Oh, the last year is 9999. So we're going to have like a Y10K problem, I guess. Um, so, yeah, you can think about that. I mean, it gets, again, it gets tricky. For example, the date pattern I have, this date matches it, okay, even though there is no February 31st, right? So, I mean, if you get a really complicated date pattern, then, um, you know, then you would check, you would catch that. You might even like catch like whether it was a leap year or not. So 229, 2020 is okay, but 229, 2019 is not okay. Here's another one. So um, pattern for validating URLs. So they may or may not begin with the protocol, HTTP. Uh, and then there's the server, which will have like an ND, EDU, or COM, or GOV. And then there's like followed by like a path, which is just a bunch of things with slashes after them. And then let's say that the last thing in the path has to end with .html. So this is a restricted form of URL. And then, um, so this is not part of the assignment quite yet. We might do this as a separate thing. So we had this assignment, um, we had this assignment like a, a few um, days ago, regular expression combinators, where you were building recognizers, using combinators to build recognizers for regular expressions. Here's a different way to do this, having objects representing these things. Um, having objects representing the different regular expressions. And each of these objects has an accepts method that given a string uh, will return true, it does match this pattern, no, it doesn't. And so for example, um, here we have follows. Okay, and that has two regular expressions associated with it. Let's call them A and B. A follows B. Here's pipe. It has two regular expressions following them. A and B, A pipe, A or B. And rep has one regular expression, meaning repeat this regular expression zero or more times. And opt has one regular expression, meaning this regular expression is optional. And literal just encapsulates a string, right? You have to literally match that string. I don't, I guess I did get some code here. So regex was a trait. Here's my case class. Uh, it has this text in it, which is a string. And we accept the string S only if S is literally the same as the text. I've missed the pipe opt and follows. Uh, those are for you to fill in. Um, and then here is a uh, rep. So it's got this regex here. That's the regex that we're repeating zero or more times. Right? So we accept the string if what? Well, if that regular expression accepts some, some prefix of the string, the first i characters in the string, 
And here's a recursive call to accepts. This dot accepts the, the suffix of the string, everything after the first I characters. So this is an iteration. I like this because it's an iteration and a recursion combines together. Uh, that's the hard case there. Uh, OPT pipe and follows are a little bit easier. And then here's how you use it. For example, uh, here's the pattern zero, zero followed by one, one. Okay, so the way that you would build that is I'm going to make zero, zero literal. That's a regular expression. One, one's a literal one, one is a regular expression. And then I feed those to the follows uh, constructor. That's pattern one, right? And when I run this, it will accept this first string, zero, zero, one, one, but it rejects the second string. Now I'm going to repeat that pattern zero or more times. It accepts the empty string. Uh, the outputs are down here. I should have put them in as comments, but, but you see what's going on. Put it this way. Um, there are two ways to represent a regular expression. You can represent a regular expression as a string, right? And here this string, if it appears in a context, um, where a regular expression is expected, then it's parsed as a regular expression. So that's what we've been doing. We've been representing all of the regular expressions so far as strings. And for uh, it matches, you know, expects its input to be a string representing regular expression. Or you can take the more object-oriented approach and represent regular expressions as instances of the regex traits, you know, either reps or you're building them up, in other words, uh, rep or pipe or opt or follows. And I suppose another option is regular expression is just simply the recognizer function itself, something that recognizes whether strings match that or not. And that's the approach we took on last week's homework assignment with the regex combinator um, problem, which I, I think that solution is in the demos area. All right, let's go back to um, the lecture. I think where was the lecture? Case classes. Okay, so these are kind of cool. So I've mentioned case classes to you before. Uh, if you write the word case in front of a class declaration, then, uh, then it automatically generates a companion object for you and, you know, a bunch of other things. But uh, so it generates two string equals hash code and copy methods. And it has a companion object with apply and unapply methods. So the question then is, what is this unapply method, okay? And let's see, I think what I'd like to do here is switch over to, switch over to code. All right, where was I working on this? I think, was it called Lex? Yeah, here it is. Let's look at, let's look at it in code. So I've got a worksheet going on here and I created this case class. Look how elegant this class declaration is. Let's go through it real quickly. So the name of the class is EXP, short for expression, and it's got three fields in it. It's got arg1, which is an int, op, which is a char, stands for operator, and arg2, which is an int. I don't even need curly braces here, okay? And now, uh, so this is, instances of this class represent expressions, expressions like uh, two plus three, four times five, that kind of thing. And now here I'm gonna have an execute method I'm going to have this execute method, which takes one of these expressions as an input 
and executes it. Okay, now the thing about these case classes is that uh, they can be used, if you write the word case there, it can be used in a match command, in the match expression. Remember match has all of these cases after it. So the case here also means the case here. Okay, and look how cool this code is here. So this expression you've given me, if it matches this pattern, okay, so, uh, it's uh, an expression object. Uh, arg1 is, I'm going to call it here, a1. Op is equal to the character plus, and whatever arg2 is, that's a2. Okay, then what I'm going to return is a1 plus a2, and I'm going to put it, I'll make it an option. I'm going to put it inside of a sum object. Now, it's amazing what's going on here. Think about it this way. What does apply do? Apply is like calls the constructor usually. What does it do? It takes the ingredients for some object okay, and it puts them and it builds an object using those as the ingredients. That's for example, uh, what we come down here. Here, this is apply at work. It takes the ingredients, three plus and four and turns them into an expression object. Unapply does the opposite. Unapply takes an object and it extracts out the components, the ingredients. Okay, and so here what I'm doing when it's used in this case class, we're using unapply, it's extracting out whatever arg1 is and assigning it to this variable a1. And it's extracting out op and it's comparing it to the character plus. And it's extracting out R2 and loading it into the variable A2. If that character matches, then this is the case we're in. And so we'll just add A1 and A2. Okay, so it's kind of like a, a, it's like a bulk get. Unapply is like bulk get. You know, it gets all of the fields of an object and returns them to you. And so what I've done here is basically two assignments in one line of code, not even a whole line of code. I've created a variable called a1 and I've assigned it to exp.arg1 and I've created a variable a2 and assigned it to exp.arg2. I did that all in one line, and at the same time, I extracted exp.op and compared it with plus. Uh, if it matches, if the op matches times, then we're going to multiply. And if it didn't match any of those things, well, I can't execute it, and so I'm going to return none. So then here, um, save it. Looks like I've already saved it. Run it. Uh, here, three plus four is sum seven, three times four is sum 12, three minus four is none because I don't look after the none sign. So that's, you know, kind of the beauty of these case classes, but they're controversial, okay? Um, the reason why they're controversial is we're deciding, this is what sometimes is called pattern-driven programming. We have all these different ways of driving control in a program. There is control-driven programming. Control-driven programming, I'll make a list here. Is my text pad. Here it is. So this comes under uh, the heading I would call sequence control. Sequence control is how do we decide what instruction to execute next? And there's control driven.
programmer decides what should execute next. And in order to do that, the programmer has lots of uh, as if and while and break and continue. And you have a lot of instructions go to for you to specify what instruction should be executed next. data-driven, the data decides. So here we've seen that this is the essence of polymorphism. Right, uh, we had like, for example, um, our, um, our accumulator machine, and the program was a list of commands and it just goes down and executes each command and the type of command, whether it's an add command or a multiply command, decides what code to execute. The code is kind of weird, right? You just look at it and you're saying, well, you know, command dot execute, but you don't actually, the programmer doesn't actually know what's, uh, what's being uh, executed. And then there's demand driven. We saw a little of this in stream processing. Right, where, you know, we don't actually compute the next element in the stream unless there's a demand for it. Right? And then there's pattern driven. Which is some pattern fit by that the code fits. The type of pattern, a pattern in the code decides what to execute next. And that's what we have back here in in here it's the pattern of the code whether there's a plus sign there or a multiply sign there that decides whether we're going to execute this or we're going to execute that and some object-oriented purists say well pattern matching pattern driven isn't as uh isn't as precise as data driven so pure object oriented, the type of an object should tell you what code is being executed, not some pattern within the object. So uh, you know, type gives more information than pattern. Anyway, that's the controversy. You, you know what I'm going to do about this controversy is I'm going to totally ignore it. Um, and let's I think is that doing here for 23 o'clock. Oh, we're almost at the end, aren't we at the end? What time does class end? It's technically supposed to be 4.15. Oh, that's what I thought. I'm so sorry. Okay. I went over, but it's fine. I'm just, I'm at the end of the lecture now. Um, uh, okay. Um, the lab is not graded for credits. Um, just turn in what you did if you'd like to. If you want to hang on to it and try those other problems, you can turn it in. Um, sorry for keeping you late. I lost track of the time. And um, I will, I'll see you in office hours on Tuesday or write to me if you have problems. Okay? Questions? All right. You guys all stay healthy too. Bye-bye.